Hello, good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Randy Bell. This is Zoe Life Ministries. Uh, we're located in Metro Atlanta, Georgia. I want to welcome you to our Kingdom Man of Bible Study that we have via Facebook on Thursday evenings. Excuse me there. Had to move. Uh, adjust my camera. But uh, we thank you for uh, joining us, as you always do. Good afternoon, Miss Kelly. God bless you. Hope you and your family are doing well. And I uh, want to say uh, hello to my lovely wife, Stacy, who is... Uh, who is uh, over on the side, uh, uh, and she's the administrator of uh, of of the teaching, with the comments and with the uh, Bible scriptures and and things of that na nature, and managing the chat. So, hey, hello, my dear brother Tim. God bless you, sir. Thank you for joining. So glad to see all of you. I uh, want to uh, let you all know that next Thursday we're not going to have Bible study. Uh, I'm going to be on vacation. Uh, my wife and I are going to be on vacation, so we're not going to have Bible study uh, next week, okay? Uh, but we're going to pick up the following week. Last week, uh, uh, some things came up, and uh, we weren't able to have it, but but that's okay. Um, we are here today. All is well, and I pray that you're doing well uh, uh, also. So let's pray, and we're going to go ahead and get started, shall we? Father, we just come into your presence by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you. This is a day that you have made, and we rejoice, and we're glad in it. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for providing us for us. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for favoring us, Lord. We thank you for giving us victory, Lord. We thank you for giving us life uh, and, um, and health, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your prosperity. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your wisdom, Lord. We thank you uh, for being uh, always there for us, Lord. Holy Spirit, uh, I ask that you please help me teach your word today in a manner that will bless your people, Lord. Uh, I ask that you forgive us of our sins and heal us of our iniquities. And we thank you for being just and faithful and cleansing us of all unrighteousness. I just want to say thank you again, uh, dear Father, for allowing me to teach. Uh, and and having this outlet to uh, to teach your word, so this is our prayer, and this is our uh, and this is what we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. All right, so tomorrow's Friday, y'all, and for some of us, it's payday. Hallelujah! Got this delicious coffee that my lovely wife made, and so uh, we are ready to get started. All right, so. Get your Bible, all right? It's our lifeline, the Word of God, okay? It's our lifeline, all right? So we want to study it, know what the manufacturer, who is God in this instance, what he has for us, okay? So uh, I want us to look here in the Gospel of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, okay? We're talking about the principles of law, and I want to break down the four major laws, okay? I want to give you the definitions of them and um, rank them in their uh, level of importance, okay? So let's look here at Matthew chapter 5, and I want us to look here at verse 17, okay? So Matthew chapter 5. Verses 17, we're going to go down, we're going to read four verses, so we'll go down to 20, all right? So Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20, and our Lord Jesus Christ here is speaking, and this is what he said. He said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill, all right? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right. So a lot is said here, uh, my brother 
and sisters, and I don't know if there's anyone else on. Oh, my cousin Gloria is on. Hey, God bless you, cousin. How are you? Um, yeah, so my um, sisters and brother and family. All right, so so a lot is said here. So let me read it in the Amplified, and uh, we'll, we'll start gleaning, okay? So if you have it, follow along with me. Um, if you if you don't mind so Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 17 through 20 in the amplified version okay it says here do not think that I have come to do away with or undo the law or the prophets I have come not to do away with or undo but to complete or fulfill them verse 18, for truly I tell you, until the sky and earth pass away and perish, not one smallest letter, nor one little book identifying certain Hebrew letters will pass away from the law until all things, its foreshadows, are accomplished. Verse 19, whoever then breaks or does away with or relaxes one of the least important of these commandments and teaches men uh, and teaches men so shall be called least important in the kingdom of heaven but he who practices them and teach others to do them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven okay uh for i tell you verse 20 for i tell you unless your righteousness your uprightness and your right standing with god is more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So a lot is said here. Uh, so, hmm. all right, I think the Holy Spirit is leading me this way. Um, we're talking about law, okay? We're talking about the principles of law, all right? And the first thing I want us to understand, and I've said this before, but I want you to please understand, is that success is predictable when we obey laws all right when we obey laws success is predictable if you implement the laws of health you will be successful when it comes to your health all right if you implement the laws of work you will be successful in uh in work all right if you implement the laws of of um the laws of finance OK, you have a good chance of being you're going to be successful. All right. Uh, uh, or you're going to have uh, uh, money because you're implementing these principles. Everything we do is based on some type of law. All right. So um, law doesn't have to be some big, you know, big extraneous thing. OK, uh, there are laws in everything. Um, the law. uh the law says honor your mother and father. When you honor your mother and father, the law says that inherent in that law is that your days will be increased. Okay? So so if you break that law, then you shorten the days of your life on the earth. All right? So um you know, so everything works by laws. I mean, we have laws. If you uh, if you if you viol if you uh, if you obey the law of traffic, then you will not get a ticket. Okay, and you will not cause an accident. You could still be in an accident, but it may not be your fault. Someone else may have violated the law. You see, so if there is a red light at an intersection, and you violate that law, that red light, that red means stop and you violate that law, then um, uh, you may not cause an accident the first time. You may get away with it 10 times, but eventually the law will catch up to you. The consequence of breaking that law will catch up to you, and it could cause an accident. You can, call, you can get a ticket. Uh, you can even um, lose your license. You see what I'm saying? So um, I want you all to know that um, there are laws in everything, okay? There are laws, okay? You are a law. There's a certain way you want to be treated, okay? That could be, we could call it the law of self, all right? 
Um, uh, there's certain ways you you want you are you want to be addressed. You won't answer to certain things. There's certain things you won't deal with. So you even have certain laws that are within you that you uh that you uh, that you go by, okay, that you go by. And so um, so I don't want this. I I, I never meant for this class. And I hope it hasn't been something that was esoteric or very difficult. Uh, man, see, she violated the law. She violated the law. Well, well, first of all, you're on the line, so I'm assuming you're okay, right, bro? I hope you are. I know you probably, you know, the vehicle not, but um, praise God for insurance. So, um, yeah. So I'm, I hope you're okay. But, um, yeah, you know, so... So, so, uh, laws are simple when we know what they are and we obey them. Good, good. And we obey them. Then, then, um, then they work for us. Okay. They work for us. All right. Now, please understand laws don't care if you are saved or unsaved. Okay. They don't they don't they don't care if you're saved or unsaved. Well, law will work if you implement it. Okay? So, you know, we don't we don't go to heaven based on we don't go to be with the Lord when we die based on law. That was based on faith. We believed in our heart and we said with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and that he was uh crucified and raised and God raised him, God the Father raised him from the dead. You see? So that's a faith thing. That's not a law thing. All right? That's that's not that's not a that's that's not a law thing. So um so I want you to know that success is predictable when we obey laws laws. Uh life becomes simpler when we obey laws. Um what else about laws? Uh laws make life predictable. It really does. It really does. Because when you learn to obey laws your life becomes more consistent and stable. All right. Uh, contrary, failure is predictable when we disobey laws. All right. Failure is predictable when we disobey laws. All right. And I'm also saying and teaching this because, because, because the way grace has been taught universally overall in the church it makes many believers really hate the law we look at we tend to look at the law with a disgust or with an abhorrence but but we have to understand uh law has never ever replaced grace law give us uh grace gives us the ability to practice the law okay so just a quick review, the foundation, and I've taught, said this before, but a quick review as we go into this, the, the foundation of all nations, okay, is law, okay? The United States of America was incorporated or built based on what? Law. It's called the Constitution. The Constitution is a set of laws, all right? It's a set of laws. And the citizens have to agree to abide by it. Okay? So nations are built on law and are sustained by law. Okay? Nations are sustained by law, not culture. All right? A lot of people think culture sustains. Uh, no, it doesn't. Because if there's no law available, there's no culture. Okay? Because the culture reacts to the law, albeit good or bad, okay? In the workplace, there are laws, and then there is culture, okay? And culture can be built based upon whether the leadership will allow laws to be broken or adhered to, okay? That's why, uh, that's why there are so many bad leaders out there. OK, because leaders that are supposed to uphold the standard. They break the standard. And then they try to lead people to uphold the standard. 
Okay. So I'm saying this because culture does not build a nation. It does not build a, a family. It does not build a workplace. Okay. Laws do that. But how the laws are followed or interpreted or acted upon will determine the culture. All right. Also, I want us to understand that the quality of life in a nation is determined by law because national life is protected by law. Why is it that we have the police? Well, we have the police because the job of the police is really to enforce the law. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't see a lot of that. It just all I see is the police always showing up after a crime has been committed or showing up late all the time. So uh, I don't have no beef with police, but, you know, that's how I feel about police, you know, and I respect the police and stuff like that. For the most part, the ones that do the right thing um, because they do have a tough job. But that's why we have police. You know, most countries to include the United States of America, spend a lot of money. Most of our national budget is based upon enforcing laws. Okay? Most of a state's budget, especially a state, a state's budget is based on maintaining law and order. And who pays for it? Well, you and I, we pay for it. It's called taxes. That's why, as a citizen, you should get upset when crime is running rampant. You want to know why? Because when crime runs rampant, it takes money out of our pockets. When people don't obey law, it costs all the citizens. All the citizens pay for it. Because it costs more money to put police on the street. It costs more money to buy those new cars and, and retrofit them uh, to uh, uh, for the police so they can use them. It costs money to pay detectives. It costs money to uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 have a force overall. And so this this costs money. So when laws are always being broken, it costs us more and more money. When people obey the law. It costs us less and less money. Okay, so always remember that when 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 we ought to pray for all the craziness that's going on because we pay for it. You pay for it. I pay for it. We pay for it in the form of taxes. We, we because because in order to maintain those services, they come out uh, uh, of taxes, particularly t the taxes of those who are homeowners. Okay. So um, so law can be expensive, okay? Hey, good, good evening, um, uh, Evangelist. Good evening, uh, Brother Rahish. Uh, thanks for joining, sir. Uh, so, um, so I want you to uh, understand that, okay? The quality of life in a nation is determined by law, okay? All... God bless you, my dear brothers in India. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So notice when an area where there's very little crime, guess what? The people are joyous because it's safe to walk around. It's safe to go outside. You don't have to spend money on gas. You could just you could just walk. It's it's, it's safe to uh to enjoy your yard. It's safe to to go out front and let all the kids just play on the street and just have a great time. But when crime is running rampant, folks are afraid to come out. Folks are afraid to go spend money on 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 goods and services. Because it's too dangerous to go out. In turn, prices go up. So everything goes up when when law is violated. Okay? So always know that. Always remember that. All problems, all problems are derived from a violation of law. All problems. Okay? Personal problems. 
Do you have a personal? Uh, are, are you having problems in your in your marriage? Okay, what you should do is ask God. Well, really, you probably should know what law has you violated against your wife or against your husband, because something has been violated, some type of law. Okay, the a law of trust may have been may have been violated. A law of uh, of 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 walking out of love with your spouse may have been violated. Maybe you said something that was out of order. Maybe you said something that you all made a covenant or made a pact early in your marriage, said we will never go this way or this is the line. Maybe you went over that line that the two of you have established that you would not go over. You see what I'm saying? So a law has been violated. A law has been violated. So all problems are, devi are derived from some type of violation of law. It's our responsibility if we violate a law to find out what that is and fix it. So that we don't, so that we can, so that we could stop walking in the consequence of it. And turn it into a blessing. Okay. All societies, again, must adhere to the law. If they don't, if, if societies do not adhere to law, there will be anarchy. And when there's anarchy, when there is not order, a nation will fall. Nothing will, uh, uh, nothing will, will work. A nation will fall. It will be divided and it will fall. Okay. So those are some laws. Um, uh, the law guarantees several things. When you and I follow law, okay, um, and I'm talking about let's I'm talking about on the national level because that's what I've been really talking about, uh, you know, the law and nations right now. But the law guarantees several things. Law is to uh, uh, should guarantee national safety. Law should guarantee national security. Uh, when it comes to nations uh, or local governments, okay. Local governments, state governments, uh, local municipalities, county commissions, the, and, all, and all that. Uh, law guarantees national prosperity. A nation prospers when law is not being violated. Okay? It aids in national development. Okay? When there's law, there's order, and then development, a vision can come out of that, and then a nation can grow. A family can grow. Okay? National pride, okay. When people, when 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 law is being violated and people uh, uh, is not being violated, is being adhered to, it brings a certain pride. I'm thinking about when I grew up in Detroit, and um, you know, a lot of years Detroit was a very bad place to live because you know, at one time, or actually a couple of times, it was it was dubbed murder capital USA. Because one year, I think it was, I forgot what year, I know I was a teenager, I want to say 85, 1985, 1986, uh, when I was in high school, um, man, I just dated myself. <laughs> but anyway, uh, 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 I remember, I remember that nearly a thousand people were shot and killed. And guess what, in that group, I knew about two of them, two or three of them. They were in my neighborhood that were shot and killed, you know. But then in the 90s, in the 90s, a new police, uh, a new mayor came along and uh, I, I mentioned his name. His name is Dennis Archer. And Dennis Archer, he only did one term, but he was a lawyer and he was absolutely, yeah, still a young buck. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Dennis Archer was 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 not afraid of the gangs in Detroit. And he said, we're going to clean up Detroit. And guess what? He did. He cleaned up Detroit to the point that Detroit became number three in the nation as a desired place to live in. And that ran for about three years, maybe in the mid 90s. Uh, it was a fantastic place to live. The crime rate had went way down. Folks were getting out. Folks were having a good time. And the few times that I was up there, you want to know what? There was a lot of pride in the streets. 
of Detroit and downtown Detroit. You know, there was a lot of pride because because it was cleaned up. There was no there was no crime. There wasn't drugs. I, it, you know, it was just it was just nice to be there. So there was this sense of pride, the energy, the energy. You know, one of the things I love about Atlanta is the energy when you go downtown, the energy that's there, the pride in the city, you know. So obeying law, it develops national pride. It also develops national uh, wealth, and it also uh, develops a national culture, okay, uh, and a good one at that. But the opposite, the opposite can be when the law is not adhered to with those seven things, okay. So, you know, because look, when there is a person in a community that does not obey law, they become, what do they become? They become a security risk. They become a security risk. And what do we do with those that become a security risk? We get them up out of the community. Right? What do we do? We arrest them, we try them, and we put them in prison. Because they are a security. Why do people go to prison? They go to prison when they break the law. Because when they break the law, they are a security risk. We can't have we can't have a, a person that's killing kids out on the street. Okay? We can't have a person that's raping and murdering women out on the street. That's not good for culture. That's not good at all. Okay? That brings fear. And so guess what? They have to be removed from the community. You want to know why? Because they are a security risk. We can't afford to risk allowing them to be in our community. Everybody's obeying law. And this clown is the one clown that's causing all this stuff. No, he or she, we got to get him up out of here. It's time to go behind some locked bars forever or for a certain time. Okay? So that's what we do with a security risk. When a person disobeys law, they become a security risk. And that's what we do. All right. So um uh you know think about it. If everybody keep keep the law, it'd be a beautiful place to live on this earth. When you think about it. Because there won't be any um there's not gonna be any murder if everybody's following the law. Okay. If everyone's following the law, there's not gonna be you know, there's not going to be people getting robbed, kidnapped. You know, people's property is not going to be destroyed or taken from them or anything like that. So so that's why law is important and it's important to follow it because when we do that, then, um, you know, uh, we get the blessings of following that law. And guess what? It makes life less expensive uh, to live in. It makes life less expensive. OK, so um, uh, let's see here. Let's look at another scripture here. We're in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Let me read this to you here. Matthew chapter. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. OK, I want to read two verses to you. Verses 19 and 20. Oh, y'all, that coffee good. <laughs> All right. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 19 and 20. Now, this is the Lord Jesus speaking again. He said here, I will give you the keys, which is authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, OK, that means whatever you permit or a decree lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders not to tell no one that he was the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. All right. So heaven, that's we want to follow the laws of heaven while we're on this earth because heaven gives us laws that not only affect us spiritually, but they also affect us here on the earth. All right. Uh, for instance, I'm going to give you an example that I wrote down. I wrote two examples. Number one, gambling. All right. Gambling. If a nation. If a nation allows gambling and the, U the U.S. allows that. All right. Then gambling. Can 
create a culture of chance and luck. All right. And that's why, you know, and my wife and I, we were in Las Vegas uh, for our anniversary earlier this year. And, um, uh, uh, and man, you know, now we don't gamble, but man, we saw the slot. They were full. They were full. Now, did I, did we spend a few dollars? Yeah, we went and tried it. We spent a few dollars, but man, I got mad when I lost about five cents. I was like, oh, it's over. <laughs> so it don't work, but what you could do especially where that gambling is allowed in the pockets of the United States and little towns and, and big cities where gambling is allowed, you'll create a, you can, cre you'll create a, uh, uh, that area can create a culture of chance and luck. Okay. And then, you know, going a little bit deeper, this, you know, with some people that creates worth work ethic issues with some people because that's those citizens in that area or, the, or those persons, uh, you know, basically they're directing their resources to chance instead of investment. So, so you have to be careful. Another, all right. Now, this might be a little bit more controversial, but, you know, that's what I do sometimes. Let's just take the topic of abortion. What, what does abortion do? Abortion, it creates a culture of killing. It creates a, a murderous or a killing culture. It creates that. And this, what this does is, in turn, it causes the citizens of that culture to devalue life. Okay? So, so, so we have to be careful with breaking laws. Because what that does is it can create a culture that can lead to something else. And boy, do I believe that here in the United States with though with, 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 with abortion, because with abortion, you're killing a human life. Blood is being spilled and it's not being accounted for. And always understand blood always cries out to the Lord for uh, for vengeance. It always cries out. And that's why I believe we're in a culture right now where people care nothing about people, where people care, care nothing about the life of other people because of the culture that has been created based on that law. You see what I'm saying? Remember when I said earlier that, um, that, um, uh, uh, that, um, that nations are built and sustained by law? Not by culture. Culture is the product of that law being obeyed or or being violated. Okay, so culture always comes after law. All right. So I want to talk about a couple of things here. Uh, man, I got a lot of things here. <laughs> so I tell you what, let's go back to the scripture here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh huh. Oh, I love that. It's time for the uh, reborn to stand up for the oh, man. God, let me, let me hold on. Let me love that one. Let me put a let me put a little. Let me put that little heart there. I like that one. That was nice. All right. Um, let me see here. I got a I got a few things I want to teach, but let me get to the nitty gritty. Let's let's go back. Let's go back to um. <laughs> let's go back to Matthew chapter five. All right. Uh. Chapter five, because I want us to look at this. All right. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you to see how powerful you are in Matthew chapter 16. All right. In Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, God says from heaven. From from on high, he said, I give you authority, because remember what he said in John in um, Genesis chapter one, verse 26. He said, let us make man in our own image and let them rule over everything so god took himself out of the out of the equation so god here is saying jesus is saying here in matthew 16 i give you the authority of the kingdom of heaven i give you the authority to take the laws that are in the kingdom of heaven and apply them here on earth and he says whatever you bind whatever you forbid Whatever you declare to be un improper and unlawful. He said, guess what? 
He's, he, he'll do it in heaven. Because what's the prayer? Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Um, hallowed be thy name. The, uh, what is it? Uh, that, yeah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. What? On earth as it is. What? In heaven. Okay. So is that my phone? Okay, it can just ring. All right, sorry, y'all. Um, that thing is loud, isn't it? Okay, so you have the authority to take the word of God, to take the spirit of God, to take the authority of God and implement it in your life, implement it in your household, implement it in your family, implement it in your neighborhood, implement it in your church, implement it wherever you go. And guess what God says? I'm gonna bind it. And then he says, look, whatever you permit, Declared to be lawful on earth, guess what? He'll do the same in heaven because that's the authority that you have. Now, let's go back here to Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 20. Jesus said, do not think that I have come to do away with the law. Okay? Why he say that? Because the disciples thought that he was going to do away with the law and basically establish his kingship right then and there. But what they did not understand was that his kingship was much bigger than the earth. So he says, look, I did not come to destroy the law. Y'all hear that now? Oh, and by the way, this is old. This is New Testament I'm reading out of. Because a lot of people were like, well, that's Old Testament. No, no, this is New Testament, book, buddy. He says, I did not come to undo the law. If that's the case, why are preachers that are saying they are called by God are basically saying, don't worry about the law, we're in dis the dispensation of grace? Now, why would, now, how can that be? But Jesus himself said, I did not come to undo the law. Or the writings of the prophets. He said, I did not come to destroy it, but I came to fulfill it. Wow. What does he mean by fulfill it? He said, I came to enforce the law, basically. I came to explain the law, basically. I came to restore the meaning of the law. I came to restore the spirit of the law. Because the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were work in the uh, scribes. They were just operating under the letter, which is the lowest level. And then he said, I came to fulfill, which is another way of saying, I came to demonstrate to you, to me, to all, how to practice the law. He said, that's what I came to do. He said, I came to fulfill it. I came to enforce it, to explain it, to restore the meaning, to demonstrate uh, to you how to do it, and to restore the spirit of the law. Because the Sadducees, uh, because the Pharisees and the scribes, they weren't doing it. Okay? He says, he says, look, I assure you, until her, 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 her heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of the pen will pass from the law until all things are accomplished. Now, Jesus, he did just that. He did every aspect of the law. Now, it took him some time. It took him 33 and a third years. But he fulfilled every aspect of the law without sinning, not one single time. Oh, wait a minute. My battery is about to go out. Hold on. Save this here. Okay. Not one single time. So now when we walk in the love of God, we fulfill all the law automatically. All 600 plus laws that, 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 the, that, that, are, that are contained in the law of Moses. We don't have to worry about. We'll fulfill them if we do one thing, and that's walk in the law of love. Hmm. You're right about that, Brother Tim. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So he says, look, 
whoever breaks one of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, they will be called least in the kingdom. Do you want to be least? All you have to do is disobey laws and teach other people to disobey laws. He says, if, do you want to be great? He said, titles don't make you great in the kingdom of God. God don't care about no titles. He don't care if you're a pastor or an apostle or a doctor. He don't care. He don't care about none of that. He said, you want to be great? He says, follow the laws and then teach other people to follow them too. That's, that's, what God, that's who God considers great. See, we might consider certain people great. They seem to be popular. They're on TV. They travel the world. They got money on top of money. They just seem to say the right thing all the time. They never make mistakes. They seem to say the thing that pleases everybody. You know, they don't say anything that offend anybody. God's not thinking about that person or those persons. He said the mother that is sitting at home, and she huddles her children around. She teaches them the word of God. And she lives them the word of lives the word of God. And those kids see him. God said, that lady that no nobody know, that mama right there, she's great. She's great in the kingdom. She's great. She's great. That person that's at work, everybody doing 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 what's wrong, and that person is doing what's right. That person is doing what's right. And, and, and living it and showing folks, demonstrating it. Guess what? God said, no, 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 no. Not the president of the company. Not the director. They're not great. That one that everybody has overlooked, that's the one that's great to me. That's the one that's great to me. And that what happened with, 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 uh, with um, Jesse's boys? When God sent Samuel. He says, go to Sam, go, go to Jesse's house. And I'm going to point out who the next king is. Jesse didn't care nothing about his son, David. Jesse said, here's my oldest son. Look how great he is. He was tall and handsome. And Samuel was like, yeah, let me get ready to anoint him. And God said in 1 Samuel, uh, uh, I believe it's chapter 16, right around verse 7. He said, man, look at, look, man looks at outward appearances, but I look at the heart. Because while those other boys was doing the, what, what everybody thought was great, David was doing exactly what folks did not think was great. And that was being out there in the sheep. And you could tell his father didn't care that whole lot about him. That boy be gone for weeks and even months at a time when you herding sheep. And you out there and you can be, you can be attacked by lions and bears because Israel got lions and bears. You could be attacked. And he's just out there. But boy, when he was out there, he was studying. He was out there. He was writing psalms. He was out there. He was worshiping and praising. God says, he's the one that's great. The one that you didn't wrote off, Dad, that's the one that's great to me. That's the one that's great to me. Don't think you got to have big titles and big this and, and big, big followers and all that. No, you don't have to have that to be great to God. Just keep on doing what you're doing. You keep on studying that word of God. You keep on implement that word of God. You keep on living that work, word of God. You keep on asking for give, forgiveness when you make a mistake and, and turn around and do, and, be, and do better. You keep doing that. That's what's great to God. Okay? That's, what great, that's what's great to God. So he says, look, whoever practices and teaches them will be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. Now check this out. In verse 20, he says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness, your uprightness, or your moral essence is more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That is so interesting to me. And we've got to break this down. Now, what is a Pharisee? We know a Pharisee was a religious leader. All right? Pharisees, they were very hypocritical. They went by the letter of the law. If you broke the law, you deserve punishment or death. That's not the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law gives grace so that a person can fulfill the law, so that a person can practice the law. But they weren't like that. Scribes were basically lawyers. All right. That's what they basically were. All right. And 
that they're not the kind of lawyer that we think of, you know, today, but they were, they're lawyers. What they do is they take the word, they, they, they took the law of Moses, and what they would do is they would actually write it out themselves. They were always writing out the word, the, uh, the, the law of Moses. So they are scribes. They are, they are attorneys. They know how, they know the meaning of the word, but that's all they know. They don't know the spirit behind it. So neither groups did anything to really help the people. Okay. They didn't do anything to really help people. So why would Jesus say, unless your righteousness uprightness is more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now remember, I told you there was four laws I want to give you, and I was going to rank them from least to great. Well, let me start with the least of the, of the four laws that I want to give you. That's ritual law. Ritual law is a secondary or temporary law or temporary ritual. It's a custom, it's a system, and it's a program that is put in place to uh, for corrective and redemptive purposes. Now, this is how I interpret this. Jesus said, your righteousness got to be greater than the scribes and the Pharisees. What did the scribes and the Pharisees always do when they were confronting the Lord Jesus? They were always talking about some dumb ceremonial law. Okay. Why didn't your folks wash their hands? Why is they fasting? You know, why are they doing this? You know, this would be your self-righteous hater in your local church. Okay? Okay? Just about every church got a self-righteous hater. All right? Okay? They come in with their face looking like, look, look like they got the sourpuss face all the time. They always act like they righteous. They don't make no mistakes. If you make one little mistake, you're like evil and detestable to them. There's always one of those. There's always a Pharisee in a, in a, in a local church. Okay. They won't lift a finger to try to help you uh, do the word of God. But boy, they will judge you. And if you make one little mistake, they're going to talk about you like you are a dog. All right. I call them self-righteous haters, okay? They never make a mistake. They follow everything by the law. And if you don't, they got a problem with you, okay? So every church, I believe every church got at least one self-righteous hater, all right? That's a Pharisee. There's always a person with a Pharisee spirit in every church. You think, you think so too, Ms. Kelly? I think every church got a self-righteous hater in it. Okay, whether there's some old, old, old maid chick in there, some, some, some fired up person, some young fired up person in the Lord that just, you know, just, just think that they the stuff, some person that came to the Lord that really probably ain't never seen, you know, or none of that. There's always a self-righteous hater in every single church. Okay. Always, okay, and I love them when they came to our church because we did things different, and just they wouldn't come back. Okay, it's all good. Yeah. So they were doing all this, but those laws were for corrective and redemptive. <laughs> what you say? To, if not, if not every ninety nine point nine percent. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, there's always a self-righteous hater. You have to love them where they at, and you have to move on. You can't worry about them, okay, because they'll have you stuck, okay? You'll never, you know, being saved, you're supposed to have, you know, look, being saved is not necessarily easy, okay? It's actually tough being saved, but guess what? Man, there's a lot of joy, and there's some fun to it, too, you know? So we got to have fun. God did not put us on the earth to just be these sour pusses that bring about bad news and just everything is always woe is me. Man, live life and have fun. Just include God in it. Have fun. God has, there are things on this earth for our, for our enjoyment and our comfort. Okay? You might as well enjoy it. 
because you ain't going to have no U-Haul rolling up on your grave site when you die. Those things won't come with you. But the Christian life is difficult. It's hard sometimes. But guess what? There's a lot of joy in it. There's a lot of joy in it. So it's it's not it's not so sad that my face got a, that I got the lemon got the I got the lemon tart on my face. You know, the, the lemon tart. You know, I got the I you, you you got the you got you got the you got the lemon tart on your face, the permanent tart on your face. You know, and then you mean too on top of that. Have you seen that self righteous Christians? They they mean too. They 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 got the sour put. They mean you know. So let me let me not go there. Let me stop. But they were practicing the ritual laws that really pointed to the person that was there before them, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, putting on washing their hands before going here and 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 doing this. Those were ritual things. Okay, and God and and God says, look, your right and to enter into the kingdom of heaven, your Righteousness got to exceed the righteousness of what? Of the Pharisees and the scribes. It's got to do it. It's got to do it because they're stuck in ritual law. You still have people today doing laws, doing rituals that are in the Old Testament that are totally unnecessary. In fact, it's an insult to the Lord Jesus Christ because that's saying that Jesus and what he did is not enough. And what Jesus did was more than enough. It's ample. It's plentiful. It's what he did is not going to run out. It's not going to wear down. You see? And so we have to come off of doing these rituals uh, that don't really, really lead to anything. And some churches actually take those rituals and they make it their ritual. And they say, if you don't do this, then you're not really saved. No, nah, that's not true. That's not true. That was pointing to the to Jesus, letting them know that what they're doing is going to uh, is, is, is a corrective and it's redemptive. When Jesus comes, he's going to do away with all that because sin had to be accounted for in some kind of way. And so what God did was he said, you know what? You know, really your sins, you deserve death, but I'm not going to kill you because Jesus is coming. So your sins, I'm just going to just hold on to it. I'm going to look at it. Uh, it's going to be like a credit card in a sense. It's like a credit card in a sense. And I know my son Jesus Christ, he's going to come and he's going to pay off the credit card. But in the meantime, instead of, you know, instead of like a, um, instead of like a, a debtor, a, a debt holder, putting you, uh, putting you in foreclosure or putting you in or, or suing you or putting a lien on you, they say, you know what, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to, I'm going I'm to, I'm going uh, I'm to hold it because I know it's going to get paid off later on. But in the meantime, these are the things that you got to do to show me that I should not cancel your card. And so that's what God did. He kind of, he, he didn't excuse the sin, but he kind of winked at it and he said, you know what? Jesus hadn't come yet. Now it's different for us. All right. That don't work no more. But for them, it, for them, it worked because they weren't redeemed. And God says, you know what? I got to redeem past, present, and future, but it's not time for Jesus to come yet. OK, so he said, you know what, you're going to have to kill this bull, open it up, clean it out, take that blood, send it to me. OK, and guess what? I'm going to forgive you of your sins for right now. All right, because I know Jesus is going to take care of it because the blood of an animal is not enough to pay for sins. But he's letting them know that the blood of Jesus will be enough to pay for your sins past, present, and future. And so God says, I'll accept that right now because I know the real lamb, my lamb, is going to come and his blood is going to be satisfying to everything and everybody. So all those rituals and things like that, they were pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So guess what? You can't be in ritual law. If you're living in ritual law, you're not even being... You, that's not even God's not even recognizing that. He's not even recognizing that. 
All right. Is it okay to have a ritual? I, I don't have a problem with that. Just long as that the meaning of it is known and that it doesn't take the place of the word of God. But see, some people do rituals and they allow those rituals to have more meaning than the word of God. Okay. To, to, I've seen that word before, but I don't know the translation. I don't know the meaning of it. <laughs> so the next law I want to give you, we just talked about ritual, is legislative law. All right. Legislative law is simply a human act uh, passed, uh, is a law passed by a governing body to regulate social actions and relationships. Okay. But you got to be careful about legislative law. Why? Because sometimes legislative law will will try to will bump into and try to override God's law. Paid in full. Thank you. Uh, will try to override God's law. And I'm going to tell you this. Okay. Are we to obey legislative law? Absolutely. Romans chapter 11 tell us that we're supposed to do that. All right. But no. Is it Romans 11? Yeah, Romans chapter 11 tells us to do that. But let me tell you something. If legislative law is trying to override God's law, whose law do you go by? You go by God's law. Because now that's an illegal law. Okay? And let me tell you something. Just because a democratic body says that that law is, is right doesn't mean it's right. All right? So please understand that. Just because the majority says this is right and this is good, that doesn't necess that doesn't override God's law. All right. So always remember that we have to think for ourselves. All right. So that's legislative law. The next law. All right. The next law. Is natural law or creation law. All right. That's the original inherent natural procedures. I mean, natural principles and standards inherent in creation and necessary and required for effective function. All right. Now, uh, you know, some of you, I don't know, you might be offended, but I'm going to just keep it like it is. Like I said before, God created Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. Okay. Adam and Eve, male and female, that's natural law. Okay, and what are the benefits of that? The benefits of that is that children are created and the next generation is propagated. All right. All right. So when Adam and Harold are together, guess what? The generation dies because you cannot produce. Okay. You cannot produce. Okay. So that's just the bottom line. The natural law says that your rectum is an exit. All right. Your rectum is an exit. It's not an entry point. It's an exit point. All right. So, you know, people ain't going to like that. I don't really care, but it is the truth. All right. That that's that's the that's the natural order thing of things is a male and a female. All right. A husband and a wife. Right. Yeah. You may not agree with me, but that's it. OK. And so. So that's natural law, all right? How you see how animals behave, how the flowers, the trees, they're obeying and following natural laws, okay? And guess what? We benefit from that. We benefit, we benefit from that. And then the last law, which is the most important in strength and power, is spiritual law. The spiritual law is simply divine principles that govern the supernatural realm and the natural realm. And that's why I say, try your best to read uh, the Bible. It doesn't matter just a little bit or a lot. Just you read a little bit. You read the Bible as much as you can er each and every day. All right. Why? Because these are divine laws that God has given us for our success. All right. And, and when you read them, let them soak into you and, and make the commitment to practice them day by day. All right. Ritual laws. Let me just say this. Ritual laws are temporary. OK. And also you can. Uh, in fact, let me go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews. Chapter 10 and verse one. It says here for since the law. All right. 
L-A-W is capitalized, so it's referring to the Law of Moses, the first five books of the Bible. For since the law has merely a, a, a uh, it has merely a rude outline or a foreshadowing of the good things to come, instead of fully expressing those things, it can never, by offering the same sacrifices continually year after year, make perfect those who approach its altars. You see, the ritual laws, they cannot make perfect those that approach the altar. It did not have that power. Okay, but it was there to give hope to the person to know that Jesus was going to come and he was going to redeem as long as I followed this law, these ritual laws, and I believe that I would be redeemed. All right. So that's why those ritual laws were there. But it says those ritual laws in and of itself, they don't have no power. They only was a foreshadow of the one who did, who was full of power, who was all powerful and able to redeem mankind, okay? So ritual laws are temporary. Legislative laws are conditional. And they can be situational. So rich so legislative laws are conditional and situational. Cre natural laws or creation laws are permanent. Okay? Natural laws or creation laws are permanent okay and then finally divine laws are eternal all right divine laws are eternal okay so um that's what i wanted to give you today uh i hope you took some good notes i want to thank my wife she man stacy you have you are slaying it in the chat room. Boy, look at you. I mean, she got, <laughs> she pretty much got my outline <laughs> written out for y'all, which is great. Awesome. All right. So look, next, remember next week, we will not have Bible study. We're going to be on vacation, but we're going to be coming back the following week in September. All right. And so, um, so we'll be, we'll be back at it and uh, we'll be studying the word of God. I think we're going to be doing something different. So, uh, so get ready. We're going to have a good time as we always do. And so, um, look, I hope you all have a great week. Uh, I hope you got some understanding of what law is and I hope that you, um, study it. Thank you so much, my, uh, my dear brother and give, uh, give my regards to Miss Karen as well. And so, um, um, so look, I hope y'all have a great weekend. Stay safe out there and, uh, you know, but live life and have live it to the fullest, all right? So let me pray over you, and then we're going to be done, okay? So, dear Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the time that you have given us to teach this word. We thank you for your precious and valuable people, Lord. I pray that you bless them. I plead the blood of Jesus over them, Father, over their lives, and over all that you have given them, over all that they are responsible for, Lord. Lord, you said the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I thank you for that blood because it has healed them, and it has, um, it has healed them, and it has delivered them. Father, I pray that you will bless and keep them. I pray that you will shine your face upon them and be, gra uh, be gracious to them, and I pray that you will lift up your countenance upon them and uh, give them your peace and this is my prayer in jesus name all right so for my lovely wife stacy i'm dr randy bell this is zoe life ministries this is our kingdom man of bible study via facebook and so um you know we we pray that you have a great week a great weekend and a great week uh upcoming okay and we'll see you um if uh, you know if all goes well, it looks like it'll be September 2nd when uh, the next time we'll be on. All right. God bless you, cousin Gloria. I'll see you later. And so um, so we love y'all. Um, and y'all be blessed. And we will see you on the 2nd of September. Okay. All right. God bless you. Take care now.